Sorry, Link. I can't give credit. Come back when you're a little... Mm, richer. I promise we'll circle back to Morshu, but for now, let me set the stage. The year is 2017. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild releases with the Nintendo Switch. The truth is, I didn't play this game when it first came out. Mainly because I couldn't, I didn't get a Switch until like two years later, but also because I thought that an open world Zelda game would be kind of boring. Well, today it is regarded as one of the games of all time. One of the things I always admired about it though is its incredible art direction. It's the perfect mix of cel shaded characters against a detailed scenery. It just looks really cool. Outside of the games though, it's a bit of a different story. I'm pretty sure you've seen these renders before. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, people were all over this, um, bother figure. Compared to the in-game graphics, these bad boys have textures, brushstrokes, style. These are the promotional artworks for Breath of the Wild, and also Tears of the Kingdom, they have their own sets of these as well. They're visually striking with powerful character poses. Instant classics. Something Nintendo never fumbles is their official renders. Honestly, they're a little intimidating to study, but you know, we try our best. This is the art style that we'll be trying to replicate today. Welcome to Render Breakdown! Hey everybody, I'm LR310, but you can also just call me Thomas because I get it, it's hard to remember. Um, but please keep in mind it's an O, not a zero, goddammit! Anyway, Render Breakdown is a show where we take popular video game artworks, study its history, and break down its art style. By the end of the video, my goal is to have been able to replicate it somewhat. It's a little journey that you and I will be taking. We're learning as we go. If you're a beginner artist or just straight up don't make art, don't worry. I'll try my best to explain things in simpler terms. Everything I bring up in this video will be linked in the description, such as articles, references, brushes, and the like, so everyone can follow along as it goes. So, now that that's clear, let's get right back on track. Behind every artwork is an artist, or in some cases, multiple artists. The first thing I did was conduct research. I looked into who was behind the promotional materials and found a man by the name of Takumi Wada. He has worked on multiple Nintendo games and was the main illustrator for the Zelda series from Skyward Sword up until Breath of the Wild. Yes, he is also the man responsible for these gorgeous watercolor pieces. He then retired in 2019. Important side note, by the time of recording, Tears of the Kingdom isn't actually out yet, so I'm not sure if he's the artist for this one. Um, we just don't have that information yet. Still, it's clear that the key art for the sequel follows his precedent, so I think it's still important to talk about his work. But as of now, you know, who knows really. Anyway, in the book The Legend of Zelda Art and Artifacts, there's a Q&A portion featuring artists who work on the series. There's a bit there where they talk about Breath of the Wild. Wada says, quote, When I first saw the footage, I thought the background was an illustration, but when I looked carefully, it's moving. The graphics on this title have cell shading, so having to come up with artwork that surpasses that has put a lot of pressure on me. End quote. Wada's initial illustration passes for the key artworks were as follows. An image with a lot of precise detail, a watercolor-like style, and a rougher touch to make the image look... wilder. Apologies for not having these in HD, by the way. You just gotta squint real hard with me on this one. <laughs> these are ripped straight from the art book. I don't think they're ever releasing this in full res. Sorry. In the end, Wada went with the one that was, quote, a nice middle ground of being very neat, but a little bit on the rougher side. And that's how we ended up with this masterpiece. Now, the next step is analyzing the artwork itself. I took to the internet and googled Breath of the Wild official art, and tried to find the highest available resolution. But then I remembered. There's a website for that, PidgeyWiki. It's a community-driven website dedicated to hosting various video game media, such as artworks, promotional materials, logos, etc. I know this part kind of sounds like an ad read, but it's not. Wish it was though. You can find stuff like the Smash banner here in an insane resolution of like 24k pixels. It's a nice little website to keep in mind. Alright. Let's take this artwork and zoom in on it. Nice. What I usually do is try to figure out what medium it is painted in. Judging by some of the brush strokes here, I think it's safe to assume that this was painted in a digital art program. At the very least, partially. And made to have a sort of dry painterly gouache look. Big disclaimer, I wouldn't really call myself a professional artist, 
These are just my observations about the art that I'd like to share, and if I get something wrong, well, feel free to correct me in the comments. But more importantly, this video is just for kicks and giggles, you know, so just for fun. I like studying things and, you know, some people find it fun, I don't fucking know. While we're zoomed in, we can try and identify the different brushes that we need. I can see a couple different brushes used. One, a general dry brush that gives us these very visible strokes. Two, a brush for making the finer details such as clothing prints. Three, a brush for individual brush strokes. There are many places where you can download brushes for your art program. I personally use Clip Studio Paint and it comes with its own asset store with thousands of brushes uploaded by its users. Some of them are free, some are not, you just gotta know where to look. But this is where I got this brush. Wobbly by 64 Suns. It's a great brush for making, well, wobbly line art. I'll be using this to emulate these kinds of individual strokes. For the rest of the brushes, I turn back to Google. Breath of the Wild style brushes. Luckily, my search didn't last long. I am far from the first person interested in recreating the style, and this is evident by the multiple brush sets I found based on it. I tried a couple of them myself before deciding that I liked Frank QBE's Brush of the Wild brush set the best. They were made for Photoshop, but because they're in the .avr file format, you can use it in most other art programs as well. Neat. Okay, we've got the brushes on hand, let's try and dissect the composition itself. Generally, the way the artworks are painted are fairly simple once you wrap your head around it. If we zoom in, you'll see that the finer details of the pieces are more implied rather than fully painted on. Which is great! That means we don't have to do much. <laughs> it's honestly a bit of a relief, since I'm a lazy boy. Another thing to note is that gradients aren't really a thing in these pieces. That means that none of the surfaces are smooth, the colors aren't blended together. For the most part, these look like flat colors stacked on top of each other. If you look closely, there also seems to be a canvas texture overlaid on top of all this. In terms of lighting, the promotional artworks all have these backlighting in common. This means that the light source is coming from behind them. You'll also notice that most of the shapes facing towards us are covered in shadow. It really gives the artworks these dramatic flares, and you get these highlights on the edges that look super cool and emphasizes the shape more. Alright, I think it's about time we get cracking and start painting! I'd been debating on who I wanted to draw for this, I didn't want to draw Link or Zelda or any of the champions because it'd be redundant. They already had their own cool official artwork, so I decided to pick another iconic Zelda character that most people would be familiar with but would never have his own official artwork. In case you live under a rock, which fair, the economy is really hard, I don't judge you for it. Morshu is a dude from this thing. Lamp oil, rope, bombs, you want it? It's yours, my friend, as long as you have enough rubies. Now, it's hard to improve on a classic, but I decided that he needed to be redesigned in order to fit the aesthetic of Breath of the Wild. Brushing up on the official Breath of the Wild art book, I discovered that Helian fashion was inspired by colorful Nordic clothing. This was taken into consideration for Morshu's new design. And so, I gave Morshu a little pillbox hat. I also gave him a brown leather tunic and added some cool prints on it. I also took inspiration from the existing merchant designs in Breath of the Wild and kind of mishmashed them together. The hardest part for me was Morshu's face. I didn't fully know how to draw in the Breath of the Wild NPC art style, but then once again, I remembered something that I saw years ago. Hi, me expert here. Turns out, the NPCs in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild use an advanced version of the Mii format. This means that with modding, you can inject Mii's into the game, smiley face. Yep. Big shout out to Alice who goes by at HeyImHeroic on Twitter for this still mind-blowing discovery. I just think it's cool that Nintendo still uses Mii's in some format even though it's not in the way we recognize them. It's just such a cool thing. And so, I had an idea. What if I just make a more shoe Mii? And so I did. After like 10 minutes, I managed to make a Mii that resembled more shoe enough that I was satisfied with. And now I could use it as a reference. And just like that, we have our Morshu concept art. I also drew this in the style of the art book's concept art just to give it that extra kick. Anyway, I'm really happy with how this turned out and I actually posted this early on Twitter to a whopping 40 likes. Uh... Worth it. And so, the only thing I had left to do was to draw the artwork itself. Oh boy, I've actually been subconsciously putting this off for the longest time. In fact, at this point of writing the script, 
I haven't even started. Tears of the Kingdom comes out in two days. Shit. Alright. Here goes! And I've made myself a hot dog. With these kinds of projects, sometimes I feel like my biggest enemy is myself. Half the battle with making art for me is, well, making the art. I wish there was an easier way, but getting myself ready to this point is mostly why I missed my deadline of posting this video on Tears of the Kingdom's release date. Ah well, at least you're here now. Something that works for me sometimes, though, is streaming making art live. This way, I had a reason to keep going because people are, well, presumably, watching. So, kind of impromptu, I booted up OBS and went live on Twitch. Now we can focus on the painting itself. I started with sketching out the character's pose. I had decided on this earlier on. Once this was done, the next step was filling out the basic color blockings. Basically the base colors of the character. This just makes it easier for me to visualize, but other artists have their own process. Once that was done, I started doing the basic shading using the dry brush. I started placing the shadows, starting with the face. I quickly moved on to the rest of the body. Doesn't have to look neat at this point, but keeping in mind that the light source is coming from behind the character. I really only used two brushes with this entire piece, alternating between the dry brush and the detail brush for refining some places. Also, I am using references when I paint this. I have a bunch of the official artworks pulled up on my second screen as I work on this, so I can reference the size of the brushes and the form of the strokes. This is really helpful, especially when you're unsure of how to paint details such as clothing folds or if you need help with muscle groups. Also, full disclosure, I am color picking some of the stuff directly from the official artwork, so don't feel too bad if you do that yourself. Morshu's skin is directly lifted from the rooks. The rooks protection is now ready to roll. Lastly, the details of the clothes. If you look at how they painted the print on Link's tunic, you'll see that on the official key art, they're really messy and simple. So, I took the same approach when painting on Morshu's prints. Messy and simple. Just a couple touches here and there, adding the Tears of the Kingdom background, and this is what I ended up with. I was honestly surprised that I managed to finish this artwork within one sitting. I was kinda expecting it to take days, but I did this in under 5 hours. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have if I wasn't streaming it. I only had like 3 viewers max, but they were very interactive and provided some cool feedback. It was really nice, so I really appreciate your presence. And now, for the final test. The real jury is the common people, so I did the next logical step. I posted this online. Let's see how many people would buy into this. Fake leak. A thousand retweets and 7,000 likes later, I think it's safe to say that it was decently successful. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Maybe it's not a super viral tweet, but I had fun reading everyone's responses to this, especially this dude and his friends. My apologies to everyone who believed this was real for a second and shattered your dreams. Sorry. I've been spending all this time working on this video, and now maybe it's time for me to actually play the game with the rest of you. This was really fun, and I hope you had fun watching this video as well. Let me know how it did. Did you think it worked, or did you think it kinda looks fake? Um, and if you have any suggestions on what video game artwork you want me to replicate in the future, then please comment down below and all that crap. So, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. Hi. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. This part's a bit more candid, I don't have a script anymore, and the lights are off because frankly it's hot. So I'm gonna be a little bit more uh, stumbly over my words and definitely a lot more awkward. Um, so I hope you can bear with that. There are a lot of people that I need to thank for this video. Lots of people made this possible. So I'm gonna thank first and foremost Loader who made the intro jingle for the show. It's the song that you're hearing right now. Um, yeah, he composed a track, he's a longtime friend of the channel. I've used his music a lot as outro. And now he has an original track for the show. It helps it feel so much more legit. So thank you to him. Check out his stuff. He's cool and he has cool shit. Um, I think there should be a card here somewhere or in the description. So yeah, click, 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 click. Um, 
thank you to my friends Inkhat, Bitcoin, and Goal for acting as my consultants for this. Um, they helped a lot with like of uh, my video title and the show title itself, frankly. Thank you to the people who watched me stream this live on Twitch, especially Bitsy Mouse, and a user called Jim Pickens underscore call me daddy. Um, thank you for the subs and the cheers. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you want to catch me live on Twitch as well, um, I stream sometimes, very rarely, on twitch.tv slash LR310, same as my username here on YouTube. And lastly, but definitely not the least, thank you for watching. Whether you came from my unsolved videos or from Call Me Kevin or literally anywhere else, thank you so much. Um, I hope you like the new format change. Um, this is the first time I'm showing my face, so I'm a little bit nervous, at least in video, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> You can probably tell. Uh, but yeah, I wanted it to feel a bit more personal. And, you know, I felt like that the best way to do that is to inject my face into the video. It's a huge commitment. Um, I wanted to stay anonymous for a long time, but, you know, I feel like if I wanted to build, like, a more personal connection, then this is the best way to go. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to say anyway. Um... Yeah, if you have any thoughts, how's your day been, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll probably reply. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Have a lovely day, and I'll see you on the next one. Adios!